I just hit the end of month five with my tank and it is looking like this. Okay, I'm just kidding. That was a clip that I stole from a Title Gardens video. Uh, that's, that's legal, right? Uh, please tell me it's okay. So yeah, there's a reason why you haven't seen a tank update video from me for quite some time, because it was not pretty. Yeah, uh, realize it's ugly. We just fell out of the ugly tree, hit every branch on the way down, every single one. But between my last update video that I posted, I think a couple months ago, if you haven't watched that, you should go watch that now. But between that video and now, I had three main goals for this tank. One, I wanted more colorful corals. Two, I wanted a couple fish that had fallen in love. Three, I wanted no hair algae. So uh, based upon that first clip, you might already know where we landed on all of these, but uh, I'm gonna tell you anyways. So uh, please subscribe. Anyways though, let me tell you how I at least attempted to get through this ugly phase and get to where I am now, which is still unfortunately kind of an ugly phase. So let me bring you guys back to the beginning. Shortly after my last video, I had everything set up. I decided to go for a little bit of a vacation and I asked my roommate to please take care of the tank while I was gone. He very graciously said, okay. Now about a week after I left, I got a text that said, hey, I think I see some algae growing in your tank. And that was when I knew I hit stage one of the ugly phase, the diatoms. Now I was actually able to just wipe them down and uh, that pretty much took care of it. Super simple, done with stage one. Now, just to ensure that that stage one was over, I also put in about six snails at this point in time, uh, two serrated snails, two, I was told by the store that they were trochus snails, but I'm 90% sure that they're not actually both trochus snails, whatever. And then two little mystery snails. Uh, I have no idea what they are, but they're tiny, so like they can get into cracks and stuff, which is perfect. So given that we had just beat the early teenage awkward stage of the tank, figured it was time to throw in a fish. And not just one fish, but two fish to fall in love. And maybe one day make fish babies. Now, not many fish can fit in a five gallon tank. And by that, I don't mean like the number of fish. I mean, the number of species of fish that can actually handle a five gallon tank. But there is really only one fish that has my heart, the yellow tang. Well, actually as of last week, it's now the purple tang. But whatever, I wanted something yellow in my tank because I figured if I can't get a yellow tang, let's get a little yellow goby. Say hi to sashimi. You know, but living a life alone is a pretty sad prospect. Exhibit A, yeah, it's great. It's great, yeah, yeah. It's fantastic. <laughs> It's a Nacho Libre quote. But despite knowing that they can be aggressive to their own species, and despite having a pretty small confined space to put two of them in, I decided I don't want this guy to be lonely. Let's throw another one in there too. And so I got a second clown goby as well. Say hi to Nagiri. Now with this, I bet everything on the fact that these fish are hermaphroditic, and so they can actually change sex and create a pair whenever you have two together. So I was really hoping if they weren't the right sex, one of them could change, they could create a pair, maybe one day I could get yellow clown goby babies. It'd be adorable, I'd be a granddad. And look how cute they are. They're going to be inseparable. Yo, dude, they're not gonna fight. Yeah, so they were fighting. Okay, uh, Nagiri, you're in timeout because you were being a bad little fishy. So I kept them together for about two weeks like this, hoping that eventually uh, they would end up getting along and playing nice that never really happened, so I ended up actually taking one out and putting it in my other tank. So now, uh, they're all alone again. To make matters worse, the diatoms actually came back with a little bit of a vengeance. <laughs> nice and squeaky clean, I like it. And so I was left with a gross tank, a fish that wanted to kill my other fish, and one dead Montipora. The, the Montipora thing, totally my fault, that's beside the point, I like blocked out the light. It's unimportant. Basically, things weren't going that well right now. Unfortunately though, the diatoms ended up turning into something even more menacing. The dreaded green hair algae. That was number three. That was the third thing I said I did not want to happen. My fish didn't fall in love, coral died, and now I've got hair algae. It's, <laughs> it's all pretty bad. Now, I like to do my best to incorporate biological controls into my system. And so with the green hair algae, I decided to buy a emerald crab Fingers crossed, hoping that it would actually end up eating some of the green hair algae. 
And it actually did for like one day. And then the algae came back and a lot more of it came back. And then all of a sudden I had a meadow. You, I mean, you saw it. It was, it's pretty, it's pretty bad. So to make matters worse, this emerald crab decided I really liked the taste of one of my SPS. So this guy used to be a lot bigger. There's like four pieces that are hanging out at the bottom of my tank because the emerald crab just uh, snapped them off. It's freaking clawed it down and then, and then just tossed it to the bottom of the tank. So now uh, there's a few pieces of that coral at the bottom of the tank. Needless to say, things aren't going all that great. Now, if you remember, I also said one of the first things I wanted to do was throw in some more colorful corals. I've actually decided to postpone that right now because as you can see, uh, there's lots of green hair algae. And by lots, I mean only, pretty much only, I've got a tank of green hair algae. This is, this is no longer a reef tank, this is a macro algae tank. And so if you're counting, that's all three items that I ended up failing at. No new corals, lots of green hair algae, and my fish didn't want to fall in love. Now, as a side note, I'm actually working on dealing with the green hair algae much more intensely than I was prior. So in about a month, I'm hoping that I'll be able to post a video on how I dealt with that green hair algae. I'm hoping it'll be a thing of the past at that point of time. So if you're looking forward to seeing how I dealt with the green hair algae, hit that subscribe button because we'll be posting that and I'm hoping it's a success story. Otherwise, I'm gonna cry. But with all of that being said, here is a video of my tank at five months, green hair algae at all. I'm just gonna do a water change really quickly. Maybe pull some of that green hair algae and then check it out. Okay, okay, fine, fine. I'll show you the real one. So there you go, you guys. That's it. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.